Good morning. Welcome to Worship with Wesley Place. What strange times we live through as we try and find ways of connecting and keeping together as a church. This Easter season is particularly poignant because Jesus still walks with us. He still talks with us in our conversations. He still sits and eats with us through every meal and every feast we enjoy. I invite you to worship with us today in the name of Wesley Place Methodist Church. Let's sing from our archives together. See what a morning, gloriously bright. turn to God in prayer. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, isolated as we are from each other, we come in worship today to share in your story. We come to feast with you, to approach your throne with the knowledge that you died for us and rose again. Alleluia, risen Lord Jesus. Alleluia. Father God, we thank you that you come and meet us where we are. We worship you, we adore you. We thank you that you walk the lonely road with each of us at the moment. That you treat us as equals even when we fail to recognise you as our God. We worship you and we adore you. You always love us, always care for us always want to eat and drink and feast with us. Such is your love. We worship you and adore you. Thank you, Lord, that though we may think you are a stranger, you are in fact our friend. Open our eyes to see you in those times and places where you are there with us. Risen Lord, we're sorry that we fail to recognise you in our midst, so often too preoccupied with ourselves. Lord, we're sorry that we let you down, that we feast and don't invite others to share with us, and don't even think of recognising the fact that you might be there. 
We're sorry that we welcome friends, but not always strangers. We leave out those who make us feel uncomfortable. Forgive us, Lord. Help us to be generous people. Our church, our homes, our hearts, always places of welcome. We offer our prayers in and through the name of Jesus Christ, who walks with us, whether we acknowledge him or not. Amen. To Emmaus, Luke chapter 24, verses 13 to 35. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognising him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. And yes, besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in the scriptures. As they came near to the village where they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly to stay, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table, he took bread blessed it and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognised him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up, returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Amen. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Helen, for reading that story so beautifully to us. Welcome, children. Welcome young people, welcome those that feel young and energetic and creative. We're going to have an opportunity to do some of those things very soon. Hopefully you've been sent some of the kids packs across um, via email for you to get tucked into. But I wonder, I wonder what happened to Jesus after Easter? I know we celebrate Good Friday where Jesus was crucified on a cross because he loves each one of us so, so much. And I know on Easter Sunday, we recognise that Jesus defeated death and came back to life. But what happened then? We know he appeared to some of his disciples and some of his friends. We're going to have an opportunity in a moment to, to be creative. And after this clip, there will be a short video where you can... Uh, get involved and do another activity and we're going to create some treasure maps so just like 
on that road to Emmaus where those two people met that stranger who so happened to be Jesus. We're going to have our own journeys where we see different things and have to pass different things before we get to the treasure. Have fun doing those. See you later. So what you need to do for the creative activity is you need to get some card or some paper. You need to get some colouring materials or some Sharpie pens that I have. You need to get a tea bag, a bowl of water, and finally, a candle. Wick. should end up with a map looking like this. So this next stage you will need help from an adult. finish off with something that looks maybe something similar to this. Your next stage will be trying to create and draw the map so you can add anything you like. You might want to do it like a map you might have already done, so something in your garden or something in your local park if you're allowed to go there. Or, or you might just want to make up your own different design. I hope you had fun doing those activities or maybe have a go at doing them later. We will now sing There is a Redeemer.
spent the last few weeks looking again at the Bible stories, the uh, stories of resurrection from all four of the Gospels. And this story of uh, the road to Emmaus is familiar. It has a lot in common with the others. Um, there's a process that seems to be appearing, uh, an experience that's obviously common to the early church that's written into almost all these stories because that was their experience. But I think I'll start reflecting today by noticing that this story of the road to Emmaus is an old story. The time it was written wasn't written as a newspaper report on the day it happened. It's a story that was uh, told, thought about, retold, used in sermons, preached about, thought about, used in house groups. People reflected on it, talked about it, shared their own experience, wondered what they'd got in common with it. And by the time Luke came to write it down, we're probably talking two, three or more decades after the experience actually happened, if it happened on that first Easter day. So I conclude that it's got many, many layers. It's the fruit of wisdom and reflection and thinking. And by the time it's written down, it's written down as a profound story with a model that Christians can follow. So four, I think, very brief reflections on it. The first is that Jesus is often felt not to be present. He was either present as a mystery, or they didn't know that he was there, or he disappeared. That's so much of the Bible's story. So much of the Old Testament story is a story of exile or exodus or of God's people saying, where is God? We can't find him. And that too is often our experience. As Christian people, what do we know of what it is to cry out, where is God in this situation? Why can't we feel the living Lord to be with us? Some of us do know it. Some of us know it more often than not. Some of us remember it. Some of us yearn for it and long for it. And I've heard other people talking about the times when Jesus is real. But for an awful lot of us, it's a truth and it's a reality that Jesus isn't there. So it's okay to have that as part of our Christian experience and our beginning point. Second reflection is that this story has got in it rhythm. It's got time. It's got an experience that unfolds as time goes on. One of the things I've enjoyed doing over the last few months is getting Ruth's old family's grandfather clock going again. It's got a deep, sonorous tick to it that gives a wonderful sense of rhythm to the day. Tick, tock, and so on it goes through its old wooden cabinet. But as I reflect on being a Christian, it's more about not so much about that ongoing time tick-tocking, it's more about the moments of Christian experience, the times when this happened, or the times when I felt that, or the times when something was very real and the rest of life took on a different turn because of it. And again, all of us in the seasons and the rhythm, for me, the rhythms of the Christian year, Advent, preparing for the coming of Jesus at Christmas, the story of the life of Jesus up to Easter, and then Pentecost, and then the life of the Holy Spirit until we start again in November. That rhythm that takes us through those moments of the life of Christ, onto which we add the moments of our own life and try and make sense of our own experience. What's this time of lockdown like for us? Are we searching? Are we reviewing our lives? Are we going over old photographs or looking through old experiences? Are we waiting for something to return to normal? I'm not sure it ever is quite going to. What's the rhythm and the seasons and the experiences that we're working our way through as we put our lives next to this story of the road to Emmaus? Because the third reflection is that it's a journey of discovery. It's a discovery that Jesus is there. It's a discovery that something is happening. It's a surprise that there's something actually going on. And they tell their story to Jesus initially when they didn't know it was him. We had thought this man who came and did all this, we thought he was to be the saviour of Israel. But it turns out he wasn't. Every part of a story being told is always provisional. There's something yet to be discovered. We hear stories from hospitals. We hear stories from the scientists. We smile sometimes at what Donald Trump says 
injecting yourself with disinfectant. Could that kill the virus? Don't try it at home, folks. The discoveries that we're waiting for scientists to make are maybe the so, so similar to the discoveries that we as Christians are waiting to make. We're waiting to discover Jesus in new ways in this experience of lockdown. We're waiting for new relationships to happen. We're waiting to understand how to use the technology that everybody else seems to know how to use expect, except for us. So I encourage this time of lockdown to be one of prayerful, careful searching, waiting and watching for the discoveries to be made. Who is, who are we as God's people? Who am I? Who are you? What kind of church is going to emerge after and through this situation? We're on a journey of discovery and we haven't yet discovered it all. And then the final reflection is that this story has got in it a sense of drive, a sense of momentum, and it finishes, as all the resurrection appearances do, with a sense of, we met Jesus, he was alive, and we knew that this was the next thing he was calling us to go and do. Our story is now complete. We did make the discovery. Let's go and tell somebody else and hope that they make that discovery too. So what's the question for us? What's the next step? What's the story that's driving us, that's commissioned us to say, because I'm a Christian, this. Because I've met the risen Christ, that means this. All of the Gospels end with a commission. Go. Now, going is difficult when we're told to stay at home at the moment. But every phone call, every email, every Zoom meeting, every time we stand outside and greet our neighbours cheering for the NHS, it's an experience of going and influencing and being part of the living Christ in the world today. I was reflecting on this journey of discovery that we all went on recently because I succumbed to a rather interesting story. It was two or three weeks ago now uh, when uh, Ruth showed me a picture on Facebook. She knows I love Northumberland. She knows I love journeying over to uh, to uh, Holy Island of Lindisfarne, to walking across the poles that mark the ancient pilgrim route that Christians have walked for hundreds of years. And on those uh, stories, here's a picture of my friend Phil, uh, who some of you know from the videos he does of gospel stories now. He and I shared a sabbatical some years ago, walking across that way. And every now and then there's these shelters, rickety shelters, uh, up on top of the poles, so that if the tide comes in and you get trapped, you can run and shelter while the tide comes in and goes out again. Ruth showed me this picture of uh, one of the new shelters that had been put up. It was uh, paid for by an awful lot of council money. Local people were objecting uh, because it had got Wi-Fi, it had got a jacuzzi, it had got a stocked bar and fridge so that pilgrims could enjoy all the mod cons if they were caught by the tide and had to run up the ladder. There was questions from the RNLI about whether it was safe enough for people to go into Questions from the RSPB over whether it would affect bird life in that delicate part of the world. Yeah, it was April the 1st that the uh, story broke on Facebook. And I realised I was taken in so far. So I started to think, Wi-Fi? A fridge? Not a jacuzzi. And that moment of realisation, hang on a minute, it's April Fool's Day. Each of us is on a similar journey of discovering something that's real and true for us. So let me finish with this picture of uh, Bishop Coleman, one of the ancient Christian leaders who's depicted in my painted glass window in Hilda, my prayer shed. Coleman, who is depicted there as a church leader, he was Bishop of Lindisfarne in the 7th century, and he will have known and will have walked that pilgrim way that Christians still walk now, 1,400 years or so later. Put him in this picture, asked a friend to paint it for me, because each of us as Christians walking our way is walking that ancient pilgrim way. Each of us is walking the road to Emmaus, and there are just the guide poles and the Christians that have been that way before us. And as we walk that way, we discover that Jesus is walking with us. 
There's no notices as such at the moment because not much is happening and the church is closed, obviously. But we do ask you to continue to keep giving your contributions. The finances of the church are still needed. If you can take out a standing order or a direct debit, if you haven't done yet in the name of the church, please contact me or one of the stewards or the treasurer, Alison, and we can make those arrangements. If you've got the church envelopes, continue to put the money in week by week. It is so much needed. And if you usually just give cash when you come on a Sunday, please continue to do so. Or write yourself an IOU or send us a cheque once a month. Please find a way of making sure that the giving continues. So let's turn to prayer. And I ask you to join me when I say, Lord, in your mercy, to reply and join in. Hear our prayer. God, our Heavenly Father, we bring you the needs of the world. For those who consider themselves to be strangers, walking in strange places. Help us in whatever ways we can to welcome the strangers into friendship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, make each of our conversations and our phone calls an experience of welcome, where we may be deepening friendship and surprised by the presence of the living Lord in our midst. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we remember a Bible story in which food and feasting is so much a part, we remember all those working at the moment to bring food to people in their homes. We're thankful for neighbours and friends that are shopping for us, and for those farm shops and businesses and supermarkets that are delivering. Lord, please help those engaged in business, tackling the challenges of the current day and age, to make sure food and supplies get through. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for the politicians and the scientists, all those tackling at high level this crisis at the moment. May they find wisdom, may they find peace, and may they find ways to go forwards in our society and around the world, accepting the changes that will have to be, but finding ways through together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, as you walked on the road to Emmaus, walk with us through all our travels. Help us to know your presence with us and to be your presence to others. And at the end of the day, to all join in your feast. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We share now together the Lord's Prayer, again from a recording that we've used from last year. And after that, we'll be singing our final hymn, Thine be the glory. And we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
the blessing that perhaps seems even more to us now with the time that our doors are closed for the time being. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. And may that blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with all of us, those we can't meet at the moment but are keeping in touch with, those we love and those whom we remember, now and always. Amen. <laughs>